Hello, my friends, and welcome back to the Time to Level Up podcast. I am thrilled to have a repeat guest today. I am having today a conversation with Sierra Stockland, and Sierra has a book called Inventory Genius. So she is an author. She also has a podcast by the same name, Inventory Genius, and she is a coach who helps business owners use their inventory to create more profit and more cash. And she recently also, or as time of recording of this, hadn't yet completed an Iron Man event in Hawaii. So that's super excited. So as you know, I am a big fan of knowing your cash flow and having a profitable business. So I wanted to invite Sierra back on to chat about how you make decisions based on your numbers. So sit back, buckle up, and listen to my conversation about all things numbers, profit, inventory, cash flow with Sierra Stockland. Hey, listeners, welcome back to the Time to Level Up podcast. I am thrilled to have a great friend back, Sierra Stockland. She and I recorded, I looked back, it was 2021. It was seems like a hundred years ago. We recorded another episode, different episode, but we now are both a lot more, we're older and wiser. We're we seasoned. Have more thing, we're seasoned and we have lots yeah. of things to share with you. <laughs> so, okay. So Sierra, introduce you yourself. I'm just going to have you do okay. it. Okay. So first I need to know how many pairs of glasses have you accumulated mm-hmm. since our last conversation in 20 probably 10 okay probably 10 yeah so fun. but then they're and they're like um blue light glasses That's because so great when we're on zoom all day my eyes I started to get it's floaters and flashers this is a little too much information but that comes from the flash- seasoning that we have yes. in life yes. Yes. so the ophthalmologist was like it may not help at all but hey try it and it's I haven't had them since I haven't had the flashers and floaters since I've started. Hey, I know I need to, I need to do it too, but yeah, it's all good. Well, I'm Sierra. Hello everyone. And um, I'll I'll introduce myself here as a third generation entrepreneur. So born and raised around small business, have a passion for small business owners. I've had multiple small businesses done really well with some. I always like to say I've had lots of wins and I've had lots of losses as well. And through that have learned a lot of things. My biggest stint was with a retail brick and mortar store that I started in 2006, built it and franchised it. And after I sold the brand to one of my franchisees, I built and sold a subscription box in 18 months. So that brought me into kind of this digital space and never thought I'd be a coach or consultant ever, like never even thought of it as an option um, until I started that business and started answering a lot of financial questions for inventory-based business owners And that kind of segued right into this coaching consulting role, which I absolutely love. And I feel like God made me for, but I had to do all those other hard things first that gave me, you know, the good answers for people. And I feel like I'm right where I need to be. And so I love to visit with small business owners about building profit and keeping cash in their businesses. Profit, such an amazing topic. Such an amazing topic. So tell me, what do you, like, let's think about this. What are your the top, maybe top three things that you see small businesses think or do around profit or no profit? Yes. (laughs) Yeah. So I think number one is they focus the vast majority, vast, vast majority, even multi, multi multi-million dollar business owners think about top line revenue instead of bottom line profit. So I think a lot of that comes, it's like the vanity metric, right? We all want 10,000 followers on Instagram, but we don't take care of the 2,500 we already have because we want a big number. So we want a million dollar business, but we aren't taking care of the 750,000 that's already coming in. And so we focus on top line number. That's probably the number one thing. Number two, which goes hand in hand is not understanding their numbers, So most founders are visionaries. They're very good at solving problems. They're usually really great with people or selling. They're good at figuring out a solution, executing on it, but they're not very numbers focused and are very insecure when it comes to numbers. And so they just say, well, you know, I don't know. I have some money, so I'll figure it out or I'll hire a bookkeeper or I don't need to worry about it. Um, In fact, I was just talking to a potential client today 
Um, and they have a fantastic business model. And she was saying um, one of the people in her business who founded it has said for years and years, you know, we have good books, but I get them. I don't really know what they say. So I'm going to shove it in the corner and like go out and do the work again. Right. So yes. that would be the second thing. And then probably the third thing as it relates to profitability is when they decide to grow, they don't grow off of how is this going to affect the profit of the business? They grow off of feeling a need for more money. So always chasing sales, but not fixing the root problem, the expenses, the trouble, the problems just follow along with the growth of the sales. So you just grow all the problems along with it. Yeah, that's interesting. So I was just having a conversation about someone that wants to grow a certain segment of their business. And, you know, thinking of all the things that that's going to involve and kind of more of like, I'll call it like the the logistics of it. And I, I was like, well, let's stop. Let's just stop. First of all, why do you want to grow that segment? Well, it's the one yeah. I'm most interested in. Not necessarily the most profitable, but the one she's yeah. most interested in, which there's something to be said for that, right? Because you want to be doing something you you love, but yep. it may not be the most profitable. It's definitely the most hard to manage. And I, I said to her, but you haven't cleaned up all these other things that are going on over here. You haven't solved yeah. all these other initial problems. Yeah. So interesting that they're, you're saying they're growing off the feeling of needing more, Yeah. needing more. So yeah. Should they grow? Should they pause? What do you think they should do? Clean up their mess first, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, so I was talking to a, a client a couple of days ago and she's thinking of uh, starting a really amazing marketing initiative, which will be fantastic. And I said, the problem is you don't have a good foundation at all. Like you don't know what's going on underneath in the basement. So if we just keep building up, it's going to topple over. Like you're going to end up with, no business at all, so much stress, a bunch of debt or any, any three of the above, yep. right? Yep. We have to fix what's going on in the foundation first. It's not the sexy fun work. No. It will become the sexy fun work, which I love seeing the transformation in clients of like, I don't like the numbers. I don't understand. And suddenly when they know how much power there is in numbers and they understand there's clarity, Oh, now we're going to focus on numbers and they don't, that doesn't mean they become a bookkeeper or an accountant, but they say, okay, that KPI or that key performance indicator, that number, I'm going to make that work for me. Then we can grow really smart. Then we can do all the marketing initiatives we want because we have ways to measure, track and measure, see performance. So do you think think it's just, yeah. Do you think small business owners even know what their KPIs are? No. Okay. What do you think? And I can say that because I know that I didn't. Yeah, I, I know. Me, yeah. sorry, I would. I originally because originally you're just kind of like, let's just try this and see if it works. Yep. And let me exchange this idea for money. Oh, that worked. Let me exchange this thing for money. Oh, I sold it. That's exciting. I'll do yeah. ten more of that. Yeah. Yeah. But and yeah, you did sell it or it did work, but how well? Right. Yeah. Like how well? How effective was it? What did it do for you besides give you that little high? that it worked or it got sold, right? Like how is it working for you? So do you ever kind of like, sometimes I think, okay, if you're going to bring that new, if you're going to do the marketing initiative, how is that working for you? Like what did she want to get from it? That more, more sales. Okay. So she gets more sales at the top. Yeah. Okay. So she gets more sales. What's the problem? What do you think potential problems are that she's going to find eventually? Yeah. So there's so many expenses tied to those sales. So we think we can grow the sales and it will fix things like, oh, I'll get a paycheck. I'll have more money in my bank account. But when we don't understand what expenses are tied to the sales, Uh those expenses just grow with the sales. So in my book, Inventory Genius, I talk about the little kid's book, If You Give a Mouse a Cookie. Yeah. And I say like, that's how I built my business. Not good. I was like, oh, you know, I need, I have all these customers. Now I need a forklift. Well, then I bought a forklift, but then I needed someone to drive it. And then if I had someone to drive it, I had to have someone to manage the person that was driving it. And if I had that, then I had to have a corner office. So I needed a bigger warehouse, right? So all these things were just exploding and I wasn't keeping any money. So I had more and more and more money at the top, but less and less and less in the bank account. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So really what you should have been thinking about 
are all, you should have been kind of calculating all those ex- additional expenses with the forklift. I, I also thought about what about the license for the forklift? Person? Yes, all the things. And it's that just, was was and like, that's one that? thing. Right. <laughs> that's just right. the forklift. Yeah. Okay. So should yeah. you buy the forklift or how do you know when it's time to buy the forklift? Yeah. So I think understanding what's attached to the sales and then backing into that. So when I start working with a client, we always create a sales goal first and it's not, I want to be a million dollar business. It's what do you want for a paycheck? Where does that sales goal come from? Like, what are you, if they're a current business, what are you doing now? KPIs. So what's your average ticket? How many people are coming into your store or shopping with you online? Mm -hmm. What's your conversion rate? So your main performance indicators, Mm -hmm. how does that feed into the goal? Okay. Now, if you have inventory, then we'll look at like, what is the the sales cost you? Mm -hmm. If you don't have inventory, like if you have subcontractors, you know, 1099s, mm-hmm. like what does it cost you to make the sales? What does the rest of the business cost you now? Like drop down to the bottom. Oh, we don't get to keep any of that money. Okay. So then we have different levers that we start to pull to make sure that bottom line looks good. We do all of that work first. Mm-hmm. And then we know, should I get the forklift? Cause is the forklift actually going to produce more profit or just more busy work or more expense? Right. And more to yeah. manage and everything else. Yeah. Okay. What do you think about creating habits or or routines around looking at numbers? Like this is a question yeah. I get a lot. Yeah. How do I? I mean, I was, I was really good at it for like a month, and then it all fell apart. Yeah. What do you think? Like, tell me your thoughts on that one. I've got my own ideas, but I'm curious what you what you'd say. Yeah. So I think anything we don't enjoy doing, we need to do it first. So a mentor told me once, like, eat the frog, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's morning, why I have that all over stuff. Yeah. Yes. Just get rid yes. of the icky, hardest thing first. Cause if you don't, you're constantly avoiding it all day, all week. It's distracting you. It's taking so much time. So if numbers, money management, especially if you have a lot of debt, you don't have a lot of cash, you have a lot of problems going on. We want to just avoid it, Mm -hmm. but like, let's tackle it first. So I always tell my clients to focus on it right away, Monday morning. So I call them money Mondays. Mm -hmm. Like, let's just get after it right away. Cause not only do you get it out of the way, but Mm -hmm. you also line up your way. Like you can look at what's going on in your business right away at the start of the week and then make educated decisions instead of my bank account. I don't want to file the receipts. I don't want to look at, you know, let's just do it right away. Monday morning. Now we know what we have. Now we can make a plan of action. The part we didn't like is taken care of. And if you do that on, let's say, Money Mondays, that just becomes a part of your life. Like it becomes part of the routine. You just get it done with. Brushing your teeth. Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yep. And you just, you know, I also layering things. So in Atomic Habits, he talks about layering. Mm -hmm. So if like brushing your teeth example, if you want to start flossing, you always brush. So then floss when you brush. Cause you're always going to, you know, so it, yep. you're reinforcing a habit that you're already used to. You're just, you know, you adding something yeah. on. So, yeah. It's interesting that it's like, so this is like a, so easy to do. And so not easy to, you know, it's easy to do and easy not to do, but here's another thing that I get. Okay. Well, I mean, when do I know I have a CPA, they sound like I have someone, I have an accountant that does the taxes, but do I need a bookkeeper? I mean, the bookkeeper just seems to be giving me a report or just making sure I get paid. They're not giving me anything else. Should they be giving you anything else? Like, I'm curious how you answer that one too. So they won't. And I don't really think they should. That's not their job. So a bookkeeper's job is to like tidy up your information and deliver it in a super easy to read package. That's it. Bookkeepers are rear view mirror people. And that's how they're wired. That's how they're created. They enter data. They put it together. They give it to you. You will rarely, if ever, find a bookkeeper or an accountant that's strategic thinker. It's just, that's not- That's that just not that they do. Yeah. Right, right. And so having someone that's a profit strategist, which is what I do, that says, okay, now we have the financials. What do we do with these numbers? How do we yes. forward think? Like, okay, that happened last month. What does that mean now for this month? So you can't expect a bookkeeper to do that. And if you don't know how to create strategy from your numbers, you need to hire someone that can help you with right. strategy. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's exactly what I say too. Cause, but you've yeah. got to get the books cleaned up before yeah, you, you have can even have think books. about the yes. strategy. Like you've got to get those books cleaned up. You have to get yourself in that routine of looking at them. Yeah. And then, okay, now we can move forward. Now yes. we can make some progress. 
I had a, um, in my program, I have people enter numbers. We benchmark together, which is pretty unique. And one of my clients just was not entering her numbers. We do it every Monday. And she'd say, oh, I'm going to do it. I'm gonna, yep, Sarah, so you never do it. Finally, I was like, why are you not doing this? Like, it's part of the program. I want to understand why. And she's like, I just don't like what they say. I don't want to enter them because I don't want to look at them. And I said, here's the thing. Whether you look at them or not, they're still the same. So we can look at them and we can fix it or we can avoid it and we can pay the consequences. So the numbers are the same whether you look at them or not. You need to look at them and just hit that head on. And you know what? I think there's something to, you know, the routine. People have to really want the end result. You know, if they don't want it, they're always going to avoid it. And there's always going to be an excuse and we're always going to follow the routine, right? Yes. You have to want the result bad enough to do the work. So so I do some talking around being committed versus being interested. So it's Mm -hmm. like the person got to you, whoever this person is, like they're interested in this. Yeah. (laughs) But are they committed to it? Yeah. There's the difference. And I think that is a lot of mindset work more than anything else. Because you've really got to shift, I like to say, sort of like turn the dial from interested to committed to create the change or else it's not going to happen. I've never thought of it that way. Yeah. So there's no way that actually answers a question for me because I've wondered, you know, I work with lots and lots of business owners and they all get the same information from me. And Mm -hmm. I'm sure the same thing happens with you. Some succeed and some don't. Mm -hmm. And I always wonder, what, what's the difference? And I think that's part of it. Everyone's interested when they hire me, like they're all interested in having less pain, less debt, more money, but are they committed to doing whatever it takes to actually get there? And some are not very, No, some are not. So, and even like, here's the other interesting part. So let's say this person is entering their numbers in. Okay. So they have the knowledge, like the numbers are on the table, you know, a plus B equals C. Okay. So knowledge is a whole piece of it, but then you have to have the thinking around being okay with taking some risk and making decisions. Yeah. So there's knowledge and then there's mindset, the piece of that. And kind of the mindset has the two parts. I always say like your thoughts and your feelings. So what are you, she's feeling defeated, sad, angry, whatever, right? Like negative. And how does she change that? Well, it's not going to change just by looking at the numbers. She's going to change her approach, the way she's thinking about things so she can take different actions. So that's all, again, like another level of moving from interested to committed. Yeah. So that's like another like step in the, in the process. Yeah. So that's so interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So you can know it all. Yeah. Right. Like I'm in, I show up every week. I put my numbers in. Okay, great. So you got the knowledge. Now what? Now you've got to take action, but that action is only going to be driven by what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. And that's, and the, you know, the thoughts are like, you've got to create that thought that you're, you're all, all, all in to creation. Yeah. And it's interesting. I just, oh, I love talking to you about, because you're so knowledgeable with the whole thinking piece of it. Like what goes on in our brain? Yeah. It's so interesting too, with so like doing the Iron Man stuff, I was talking yeah. to a friend and I was like, anybody could do it. Like, I just, it's not that big of a deal to me. And she's like, Sierra, no, I don't. She's like, I don't believe that. I do not believe anyone could do it. And I said, I do. I do believe that you can hire a coach. You can. Yeah. Um, and what she was saying was similar to what you're saying. Anyone could hire the coach, have a training plan, pay the entry fee, but it's the level of. I signed up. I'm going to accomplish this. I believe I will finish. Yeah. It's there has to be a belief thoughts. plan. Like, so yeah. you could give them like with what you're doing, you're giving them the action plan in a sense. Yeah. But they also have to have a belief plan. Very or good. Else, like this person that's, let's say we get her to the place where she's putting her numbers in and you're like, okay, so here's what I think needs to happen. We need to not get the forklift. And we need yep. to, you know, let's sell what's selling really well, which has the yes. biggest profit margin. I mean, it may not be the sexiest of all your options, but it definitely is working. People want it. Let's do more of that. Okay. Yeah. Great. But she may not have the belief behind sticking to that plan. 
right? Yeah. And that then kind of, why doesn't she have the belief? Well, I mean, she's been doing it forever and there's so many competitors out there and it's just not exciting anymore or whatever we want to talk about. But that's, there's a difference. So your friend's right. Like, no, not everybody could do an Iron Woman. But Sierra's doing an Iron Woman, just by the way, or Iron Man, do they call it? Iron Man, yeah. Do they never, do they switch that around? No, and I love it. I'm like, I am an Iron Man. I love this. Yeah, okay. Give me the full title. Right. (laughs) Okay, so she's doing an Iron Man in Kona in October. So we were talking about that before we started recording. But like, yes, not everybody could do it because not everybody's committed. They could be interested, but they're not committed. Very interesting. Okay. Well, mm-hmm. now it's two against one. Because I was like, I just disagree with you, Bethany. That's my friend saying. Oh, like, but I they're like, but okay, here's the thing. Like physically, they could get in, they could probably could do that. Yeah. Right? Everybody could, I mean, like, barring, you know, some whatever physical huge physical issue. Yeah, they could get she could get in shape. She could follow the diet. There were, yeah. you know, nutrition plan of it, the activity plan of it, all of that. But she could, is she? Yeah. It's a whole other story. Because there's so much mindset that goes into success in lots of areas in life. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's interesting about what you do. It's like, here is how we create some profit people. Yeah. (laughs) And then it's the same plan. It's the same plan. I use it over and over. Yeah. Yeah. And it works if you do it. Right. If you do it. Yeah. Ding, ding, ding. If you do it. If you do it. And if you're willing to be not so like, it's not going to feel good either. Probably doing it. No. Right. There's the uncomfortable piece of it. Just like you have to push through when you're ready to be like, I don't want to run one more mile, Yeah, but you have to push through it. Yeah. So, okay. So to wrap up, if someone's thinking, okay, I want to be more profitable. I don't feel, feel, I'm going to use the word feel because I'm, they're not even looking at their numbers yet. I don't feel like I'm creating enough profit. What would you say to them? Like, what is enough profit? How how yeah. do they know that they're profitable or not? What's the, yeah. what's the, because that's another question, you know, like kind yeah. of almost the starting one, I think like, well, what is profit to you? What is that? Yeah. Mean? Yeah. So I think starting point would be looking at what you've got going on in your business. So are you taking a paycheck? If you're not, if you've been working for free, then we really don't have enough profit. So let's talk about how we can get you a paycheck first. If you're like, nope, I've been paying myself consistently, but you have a lot of debt and that's weighing on you. Like you're paying so much in interest. It's stressing you out. Okay, let's let's figure out how we can get to a place where profit can cover that and pay it off. If you're like, I take a paycheck and I don't have any debt, but I feel like I'm doing a lot of work for the end result. Let's look at your profit again because we want to make sure that you're never stressed out with money issues Mm -hmm. that you're paying yourself. You're getting compensated for your time. And that if you feel like you want to grow, if at the end of the day, you're like, I want to just close up shop and be done that you have the freedom to do that. Those are indicators of profitability. And I find that once, you know, a lot of people are like, I just want to be done. I just want to sell it. Well, it's probably because you're not making money because if you were making money and you were keeping money, would you still want to be done with Mm -hmm. your business? Mm -hmm. No. So thinking about those things are good. Okay. Okay. I love the the part about, um, okay, you're paying yourself, but then, and so many people are paying themselves, but measly little paychecks. Yeah. Right. That's not, they're not motivating. And yeah. I think that is the place that you have to start. Are you motivated by the money that you're paying yourself in your business? And if you're not, then we need to start right there. Yeah. 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 For sure. All right. Well, this has been super fun. And we could talk, actually, when you said debt, I was like, we could have a whole episode on what is I know. Because that's a whole other topic. Like investing in is your business, debt is, that debt? is debt Is debt good? That right? is, is yeah. debt? But anyway, we'll save that for next time. Okay. I'll save that. Anyway. How can people find you, you and your business yeah. and you and your Iron Man? Yeah. <laughs> so if you're on Instagram, that's a great place um, at Sierra Stockland, all spelled out. On that page, I share... Ironman workout training, traveling, business tips, all the things. It's just all okay. me. Um, and then if you go to my website, sierrastockland.com, you can get connected to me in lots of different ways. There's a lot okay. of free resources about money, profitability, inventory management on the website. Awesome. And that will obviously all be in the show notes. So thank you for being here. So Thanks fun. for chatting. I enjoyed okay. it. And I learned a lot today. So oh, thank good. you. You're welcome. <laughs>
Okay. What did you think of my conversation with Sierra? What were your biggest takeaways? One of my takeaways and the story that sticks with me is the story that she told about the person wanting to invest in the forklift and debating how to get the forklift. But then her bringing up the great points of you're going to have to get a license to operate the forklift and you're going to have to have space to house the forklift and all the things that were going to happen or stem from making the decision to get a forklift. That was a big takeaway because I see that happening in my business. When I decide to write a book, hmm, there were so many other things that had to happen in my business as a result of that one decision. Even though I don't have any inventory, right? Once I make a decision, it actually leads to other decisions and other expenses and other opportunities. Also, don't forget that if I want to do it the way I want to do it. So I think it's something great for us to remember that there is really there are tentacles to every decision. Another thing I want you to take away from this is the benefits of really looking at your profit and loss statement from the bottom up to help you make better decisions. Figuring out how you can create and keep more profit from the bottom up. So I hope you felt that that was just as valuable as I did. If you want more of Sierra and who wouldn't, you can find all the links to her, her book, her podcast, her website in the show notes. And I hope that we do have her back on the podcast because I think she is a wealth of knowledge. She's just a cool person too. All right, my friends, remember creating profit and keeping more cash is the way to level up. So why not embrace it, explore it and do it. Now is the best time. There's no better time. It is your time to level up. And I will see you next week.